it's not it's nice to have a face with an email i'm penny i've been i've been you're on mute you're on mute yeah well thank you i unmuted her okay got it <laughs> so i'm so happy you could join us so should we do you think we should go ahead and 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 you can just click people can you still click people in while we're going yes do you think that, yeah, so as we can stay on time for everybody? All right, so I will get started then. How wonderful to see everyone. Thank you for attending the Circle's Pathway to Leadership Orientation. This program is being recorded, so if you don't want your face to appear in the recording, you should stop your video now. This presentation was developed by the Nominating and Leadership Development Committee, which we will shorten in the presentation to simply the Nominating Committee. I'm Susan Hovanek, co-chair of the Nominating Committee, along with Penny Wald. We'd like to introduce the other members of our committee. They are Lissa Abrams, Day Bank, Renee Gordon, Suzanne Daggert, Peggy Cohen, Hillary Campandonico, Susan Schubin, and Laura Hahn. We would also like to thank the Circle co-chairs, Ann Daniels and Sally Ward for joining us. We'd also like to thank Renee Gordon and Lisa Field for sharing their pathways into Circle leadership later in the program. Before we start, a couple of Zoom housekeeping items. First, if you have a question or want to comment, please use the chat function. We will monitor the chat throughout the presentation and respond to your questions at the end. Second, everyone but the speaker will be muted to eliminate extraneous noises. So let's get started. All right, here we go. Pathways to leadership. Have you ever wondered who runs the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle? What's expected of circle leaders? How leaders are selected? And how you might get involved in leadership? If so, you're in the right place. We're gonna take about 20 minutes to explore these questions. And then at the end, there'll be time to answer yours. So let's start with the big picture. The Baltimore Women's Giving Circle brings together women who share a common goal, the goal of supporting opportunities for women and their families in the greater Baltimore area. The circle is an open and democratic organization where all 400 plus members have an equal voice and an equal vote in our grant making process. We're organized and we're run by volunteers. Our goal as a circle is to fund as many worthy projects as we can. So being an all volunteer organization ensures our administrative costs are low. It also gives our members many opportunities to participate in our work. Although not required, members are encouraged to join committees and seek out leadership positions. The circle's leadership structure is designed to be fluid and dynamic. Committees have two co-chairs, each serving a two-year term. The terms are staggered, making space every year for new committee co-chairs who bring fresh energy and ideas. The staggered terms also ensure a smooth transition from year to year. When one co-chair is serving her second year, the new co-chair is learning the ropes in her first year. This dynamic, ever-changing leadership structure helps keep our organization fresh and encourages member engagement in the running of the circle. The circle is run by the steering committee, which is made up of circle officers and committee co-chairs. The steering committee has 22 members. As you can see on this organizational chart, the officers include two circle co-chairs, a secretary, an archivist, a treasurer, and an assistant treasurer. There are also eight standing committees, each led by two co-chairs, 
all who sit on the steering committee. The standing committees include grants, post grants, education, nominating and leadership development, grantee connect, communications, membership, and racial equity, diversity, inclusion, also known as Ready. You, as a circle member, are encouraged to join any of these standing committees with the exception of nominating, whose members are appointed by the circle co-chairs. The steering committee functions as the board of directors for the circle. It oversees the management and operations of the circle. As mentioned before, it has 22 members, including circle officers and committee co-chairs, all who serve two-year terms. The terms of the committee co-chairs are staggered, while the circle co-chairs serve concurrently as a team for two years. The steering committee's work is guided by the mission of the circle, which emphasizes working collaboratively to support opportunities for women and families in the greater Baltimore area. The steering committee addresses operational and governance issues. Operational issues might include managing our membership database, our website, or our grant management platform. Our governance work includes setting the strategic direction of the circle, addressing issues like social media policies, membership requirements, communication strategies, and the grant giving processes. Budget oversight is also a key responsibility of the steering committee. The steering committee meets monthly, September through June. While the steering committee does not meet in the summer, committee co-chairs and officers are busy planning and budgeting for the upcoming year during the summer months. We're gonna pause now for a minute to hear directly from one of our circle leaders. We're grateful to have Renee Gordon, who joined seven years ago, share her personal experiences in circle leadership. Renee? Thank you, Penny. As Penny mentioned, I joined the circle seven years ago. I um, was newly retired. And after having had a career as an attorney in Washington, DC, I was looking to kind of change gears and do something where I could give back to the community. And a friend mentioned the Baltimore Women's Giving Circle. I contacted the circle. I was invited to a prospective member event and I was in awe. The women at the meeting, all members of the circle were enthusiastic, warm and friendly. Hearing a speaker who was actually a grantee of the circle was very interesting. And let me to believe this is what I want to be doing now in the second chapter. And I joined the circle and I quickly joined the education committee. And the education committee meets monthly. And at one meeting, there was a request for volunteers to make up name tags for an upcoming full circle meeting. So I raised my hand. How hard could that be? And two other women raised their hand. And so the three of us were the volunteers putting together the name tags. And that allowed me to meet some more people from the circle and work with them and get to know them much better. And then there was another request several months later for a volunteer who would act as the education committee liaison to the communications committee. And I thought, well, of course, you know, let's see what goes on in education. And so I went to the, uh, see what goes on in communications, I'm sorry. <laughs> and so I started attending the monthly communications committee meetings and Ann Daniels, who's now our circle co-chair was at that time, the communications committee co-chair. And I really loved the committee. I loved the work that the committee was doing in terms of getting news 
about our grantees and our members out so that people knew what we were doing. And several months later, I got a call. Would I be interested in serving as communications co-chair? And I thought, well, why not? It can't <laughs> be that hard. And Anne really made the transition easy. She had prepared a binder for me of everything I would need to do as a communications co-chair. And I was then a member of the steering committee. So in addition to communications committee meetings, I was attending the steering committee. And it was a wonderful way to meet even more members of the circle my fellow committee co-chairs and find out what all the different committees were doing. And I served two years as communications co-chair. And then towards the end of my term as communications co-chair, I was asked, would you be interested in co-chairing post-grants? Again, I thought, certainly, you know, <laughs> it's fun. I get to meet people in the circle. I get to do things that I consider to be very gratifying. And so I served as post-grants co-chair. And that was another enlightening opportunity to be able to meet our grantees and to see what they do on a day-to-day -day basis with our money. And it has really been a wonderful experience for the last seven years. And I think, you know, just raising your hand and volunteering was at least my key, my pathway to leadership. Oh, that's good. Oh, terrific. Well, thank you so much, Renee, for sharing your story. Now let's continue with our program. So what is expected of circle officers? There are two circle co-chairs, whose role is comparable to a president or a chair of a board. They serve together for their two-year term, forming a strong team. The circle co-chairs provide leadership and oversight to all the circle activities and are responsible for creating a climate of cooperation and community among our members. Our current circle co-chairs, Ann Daniels and Sally Ward, are in the first year of their two-year term. The archivist secretary role is a two-year term, serving the first year as the archivist and the second year as the secretary. The archivist is responsible for electronically archiving the records of the circle in the circle library. The secretary is responsible for accurately recording circle activities, such as taking the minutes at the steering committee meetings. <clears throat> The assistant treasurer treasurer role is also a two year term, serving the first year as assistant treasurer and the second as treasurer. These two officers work together to monitor the fiscal health of the circle. They develop and monitor the annual budget for the circle and work closely with Baltimore Community Foundation to review and reconcile the financial status of the circle. As mentioned before, there are eight standing committees, each with a unique role in the circle. Whatever your background, rest assured that you can find a committee that is aligned with your interests, talents, and skills. Each standing committee is headed by two co-chairs who serve two-year staggered terms. The responsibility of the committee co-chairs are to lead, and manage the work of the committee and to actively participate on the steering committee. The co-chairs of each committee have a very detailed job description that outlines their specific responsibilities. You can find the job descriptions for all the committee co-chairs on our website on the member only side in the circle library under committee responsibilities. We put the link to the job description in the chat below. Thanks, Renee. To facilitate the all volunteer structure of the circle, many committees have created subcommittees to help carry out their functions. On this chart, the blue ovals represent all the subcommittees. 
These subcommittees are headed by subcommittee co-chairs. This structure provides a natural pathway to circle leadership. Members might first join a committee, then lead a subcommittee, and ultimately become a committee co-chair. Looking at this chart, we can see an abundance of subcommittee opportunities. At the top, you'll see our grants committee recruits 16 to 18 team leaders every year to lead our grant evaluation teams. Being a grants team leader is a great training ground for being a grants co-chair. Looking at another example, education has three subcommittees that plan different types of educational events, including our full circle programs, our grantee focus programs, and our circle book club. Heading up one of these subcommittees is a great path to circle leadership. As you can see, there are lots of opportunities in the circle for you to try out your leadership roles. So how are the circle leaders selected? The Circle's nominating committee is responsible for the smooth transition of Circle leadership. This committee develops a slate of officers that is presented to the full membership for ratification every May. At this spring, the nominating committee will slate two officers, the archivist and the ass assistant treasurer. The nominating committee also assists the Circle co-chairs in identifying new committee co-chairs. Based on recommendations from nominating, the circle co-chairs appoint the new committee co-chairs every year in the spring. The new officers and committee co-chairs begin their terms in June and complete their terms two years later in May. So how does the nominating committee get recommendations for the new leaders? We have a twofold strategy. First, we interview all the current members and the immediate past members of the steering committee to solicit their recommendations for new leadership candidates. Secondly, we solicit recommendations from you, our members. An email was sent to you about two weeks ago asking for your leadership suggestions. We encourage any circle member to self-nominate or recommend other members for leadership positions. If you have suggestions that you'd like to send us, including yourself, you can find the email link to the nominating committee in the chat. Thank you, Renee. After collecting names from all of these sources, the nominating committee meets to discuss the recommendations and then develops a list of potential leadership candidates. So what could you do if you're interested in a leadership position now or in the future? Well, for one, you could volunteer for one or more committees whose work interests you. As you could see, volunteer opportunities are abundant. To name a few, the Education Committee organizes the full circle meeting, membership, hosts prospective member events, communications, creates our newsletter and manages our social media, and Grantee Connect holds forums for past and present circle grantees. Additionally, you could take an active leadership role on a committee. So you could join grants, but then you could be a team leader. You could be a, a a subcommittee co-chair on one of the other committees, or you could just take the lead for a particular event, like a prospective membership event. Additionally, you could talk with uh, uh, your committee co-chair about your leadership interests, asking about the job responsibilities and the time commitment. There is also a liaison from the nominating committee on each committee. So you might speak with the nominating liaison about your interest in circle leadership. Or most simply, you can just send us an email expressing your interest, sending it to the nominating committee. We encourage you to nominate yourself and other strong leaders. 
to suggest candidates for this upcoming year, please email nominating at the bwgc.org, which is on, it's posted on the uh, chat, no later than January 6th, 2023. Before we turn to your questions, I'd like to introduce Lisa Field, a member of the circle for 10 years, who has graciously agreed to share her personal experiences in circle leadership. Lisa? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, just checking. <laughs> so I joined the grants committee very soon after joining the Women's Giving Circle because it was suggested that that's a great way to know how to get to know how the circle works. And it was great advice. Um, I was impressed and somewhat intimidated by the high caliber of women in the circle. <laughs> um, so I just sat as a grants reader and got to know lots of people. And I think, I think Lissa, you were one of my very first uh, grants um, team leaders. And uh, so um, I did that for a while, and then I uh, attended a number of membership committee uh, events after hearing about it and being invited by Sally Ward. Um, and I eventually started to chair what is now called the Speakers and Donations Subcommittee. Uh, the Speakers and Donations chooses a grantee to speak at a prospective member event, um, and then um, they describe their nonprofit and they describe how um, our circle has helped them. Um, and then in return, um, we in the circle uh, collect items that, you know, from their wish list um, at full circle events. And um, this formula of asking somebody to speak on our behalf and then in return collecting to help out the nonprofit was a formula that um, came about from another member in our circle, Sherry Billig. And it's it was such a lovely concept of give and take that I think it was one of the first steps that made me think, oh, I, I could do this. You know, this is something that I could do. Um, and so I started to, you know, reach out to nonprofits that would make a good speaker um, and that we worked with. And so it was just a, a wonderful thing to get to know different members in our circle. And um, so I did that for a number of years and I got to see the full circles and um, get to know a lot of members. And then from there, I became the membership co-chair for uh, two years. Um, and then after that, um, I was asked to be on the nominating and leadership development committee. Um, and as Penny just described, uh, there is one representative member from each committee. So when I was asked, I was being asked because I was representing the membership committee um, um, on the nominating committee. And it was because I knew the prospective members, new members, people that were just coming on. Um, and I served on nominating, I, I actually just stepped off um, in the spring. And one of the things that we did on the nominating committee was actually to start the stagger for the officers um, because it was one of those leadership succession things that we really wanted to help ensure. Um, one of the things that I really love about the circle is how thoughtful um, everyone is. And so at any time there's something that is thought of to do, one of the first things that the circle usually does is finds a committee. We, we, we create a committee and to really take a look at all aspects of it. I mean, there's nothing that is done just completely, you know, in a, in a, in an impulsive way. We really try to think out what this is. And we do that by pulling from our wealth that's within our circle. Um, and so, uh, that was one of the things that we did with, um, our leadership succession thought, which was that it's very important to have new leaders on our steering committee. But at the same time, we do want some people who um, are have had some repeat leadership um, on the committee because you also want somebody who's going to be able to say, oh, we tried this six years ago and we don't really need to revisit that again. You know, so um, we uh, we started having the officers um, in a stagger position. So we we have the archivist, which goes to the secretary and then the assistant treasurer serves for one year and then moves up to the treasurer. And so that is one of our ways that we have built um, our leadership succession. 
So um, there have been opportunities along the way that I just happened to come across. Um, one was I volunteered for a document reading group that was trying to update their language and move the documents onto the Circle website. Um, and I just happened to volunteer for that. Um, and then there was a pilot study that was being conducted to bring larger grants um, of $50,000 to the circle. Um, and what they did is they created a team A and a team B just to sort of see what this would look like. And so it was a pilot, a one year pilot study. I answered the call for volunteers. Um, it was fun to test it out. One of the things that we discovered was that um, reading grants um, online um, and not, you know, by printing out the paper and everything else was something that worked out well and so that ended up being implemented and is now done routinely in the circle um, and lastly there are the ad hoc committees um, the first one was created the first one that i was part of i should say um, was created by the circle co-chairs uh, for a marketing um, a strategic marketing ad hoc committee and that was created in 2017 um, to look at membership growth and messaging um, in other words technological messaging or messaging about how we get our prospective members and how we retain our members um, and so i was um, sat on that committee um, and then our current the current ad hoc committee is one that I um, chair with Mary Jo Weiss and we along with a committee conducted a search for an administrative coordinator and this is a part-time position that will assist the steering committee um, and the work of the entire circle. So um, our circle has grown and this will free our volunteer leaders uh, to go ahead and spend more time with stewardship and leadership um, on the steering committee meeting. So, um, and so that's the last thing that I've been doing right now. Um, and I just think that one of the things that I have done is really just volunteered when there was something that um, was of interest to me. Um, and there are a lot of committees that I really haven't explored yet um, that I know I can always do in my future. And um, I do want to say a shout out to Penny for developing this Pathways program because um, one of the things about the nominating committee was that, you know, we were really trying to message and get ourselves out there about how leadership develops in the circle. And so this is one of those, you know, leadership development ways because I think as we're, you know, at home a little bit more and, you know, with Zoom and COVID, I think a lot of things has kind of shifted a bit so it's really nice to be able to uh you know sort of get have a get together and see all the different ways that we can move around in the circle so thank you penny yeah, you're welcome thank you lisa yes and thank you lisa and penny because yeah <laughs> penny did a great job with this starting last year and continuing this year so thank you and lisa thanks a lot for sharing your story so on a final note here is a resource page that may help answer some of your questions. On our website, in the How We Work tab, you'll find each committee listed and their work described. Also on our website, in the Calendar tab, you'll find dates for committee meetings and events. Yep. And on the member side only, in the Circle Library, you'll find detailed job descriptions of officers and committee co-chairs. Additionally, if you wanna review this PowerPoint, you'll find it in the Circle Library on the member only side filed in section J for nominating. And Renee has posted the link in the chat. So that is our presentation. Let's turn to your questions. And when we do so, let's all get together in the gallery view format of the Zoom. So Penny, do you see any questions in the chat or any other questions? I, I think we need to take questions from the floor if we could, from the boxes. Yes. <laughs> Does anybody have something on their mind that they'd like to know or, or say? <clears throat> yeah. Penny. 
Sorry. Did you call me? Oh. I was wondering about the these ad hoc committees. Um, because I've done, you know, I've been a chairman, co-chairman of uh, one of the Grantee Connect, which I was fascinating. Um, but uh, some of the workings of the of the circle really interest me, like those kinds of committees, because they end up forming some of the policy. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So how did that? Does that come out of steering or? Like what, what did how did one of your committees? How did you? this last committee that you just did. Um, Anna or Sally, do you want to answer that? Sure. The, um, the ad hoc committee to, so most of the ad hoc committees come from steering or the co-chairs. Somebody, you know, we need to look at X, Y, Z. Um, so that's, you know, that's where they come from. Um, I will say that then if there is an ad hoc committee that's foreign, we're usually saying to the steering committee, we're looking for people to join a committee to do X, Y, Z, and names are put forward. I will tell you all right now that since you're here, your names are probably going on that list <laughs> because you've shown some interest. Um, so usually it's people on a committee who've volunteered or stood up or somebody you know knows somebody who is interested in something like that. But that's a really great question, Peggy, because we have 470 members and there are clearly women out there who would be great at doing things, but you know, trying to get our little web down into all 475 is really difficult. So coming to something like this is great. If you all, as you talk to other people and spread the news about this, and somebody says, oh, wow, that sounds great. Please let us know because we really want to get as many people involved who are interested. Um, but the short answer is yes, it usually comes from the steering committee and the co-chairs to set up an ad hoc committee. And Peggy, usually it is to address a specific yes. question or problem. It's it's not an ongoing thing. Right, There's, right. An ad hoc committee is given a, a direct um, that gives a, that's a lot of appeal for, you know, uh, for me, any that kind of committee. Yeah. Yeah. Linda Blonsley, weren't you on an ad hoc committee? I've actually been on, I guess, two ad hoc committees. Uh, the first one was uh, last year, and it was um, about special gifts, large gifts, and the potential for creation of an endowment. Um, and then I'm currently serving on an, a visioning committee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Leslie Glickman also had her hand up. Did I see you, Leslie? Yeah. I wanted to congratulate uh, the committee that put this orientation together. I've been in the circle several years. I've held multiple posts and I didn't have a really clear picture like the one you presented tonight. So thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Can I start over? <laughs> you, you, your contributions are immense already. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. Sure. Anyone, Anyone else? I want to say that I'm very proud to say that I brought Leslie into the circle and she's just done a great job. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, you know everybody. <laughs> Nothing else from anyone? Oh, I, I think. Oh, sorry, Leslie. I, I, um, I know it's not. We do this, you know, we present this online and invite people to join. There's any way to kind of weave it into one of our um, full circle meetings? Yeah, it'd not be great. quite the whole thing, but we sort of need to do it to mm -hmm. right in their face kind of thing, everyone to really um, briefly or somehow get people mm -hmm. to understand that we are looking for, we send out the emails and all that kind of stuff, but we really need to just put it right in their face. Well, um, I know it may, maybe education's not so keen on having their agendas um, fiddled with, but um, you know, it's, it, I think it would be a good thing. Yeah. Good the newsletter, the newsletter is um, deadline is Friday, but nomination 
could could do a short uh, paragraph about this and have a link to this, That's which has bit, been taped. Right. But I they can take communications can take the this Zoom and turn it into a YouTube um, video, so that oh. you, you can do a write up for the newsletter, a link to this video that Ann just taped and people who didn't make it tonight can watch it there. Um, <laughs> Suz Suzanne, I think has something to say. She was waving, but she's you're muted. You're muted. Yeah. Suzanne, Suzanne. Suzanne you're mm. muted. Oh, I don't know how to unmute. You're there. good, now you're yeah. good. Oh, oh. You're good. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say that I think that several of the sentences um, that were pronounced by the presenters were terrific. And that might be the headline. Um, something that, that Lisa Field said or um, uh, Peggy, um, it, you know, just resonated. So it might be that that could be the headline. And I also think it's word of mouth. And I think that the possibilities of what can be talked about in committees and that whole, that, you know, this whole weave of our connections with each other. So I, I really applaud this. This is great. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I need to run because I'm yeah. sitting in a yeah. parking space. Well, we, we are oh, yeah, we're over our time. So if in, if there are no other questions, I think we'll, um, we're gonna wrap up. Um, Thank you. I have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. So as you know, as we said uh, in the beginning that this leadership structure of the circle encourages new leadership. And we pride ourselves in being a democratic organization filled with thoughtful, caring women committed to learning, sharing ideas and responding to the needs of the community. We are so pleased you've joined us today to find out more about our leadership structure. We hope you will think seriously about how you might get more involved in circle leadership. So thank you so much. Have a good evening, a wonderful holiday, and send us your nominations for you and other people you know. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Very thank interesting. You. Thank you. Thanks good so job. much, Bye, everyone. Thank Thanks you. For your time. Good to see you all. Nice to see you. Thank you. We like your dog. <laughs> bye bye. 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 She left. All right, no, I'll she leave. left too. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That went very smoothly. Yeah, sorry, I did hit one thing wrong. Um, no, I thought it was great. And I mean, you and I talked the other day about the newsletter it should probably be in September. We yeah. are trying to get the membership to get new members to do this. They are going to have a new member event in January or February. Um, so maybe there's even oh. like we could, I mean, not run the whole thing, but figure out some way to maybe have like a one pager or, I mean, you guys could come and talk, but I don't want to, I don't want to assume that you'll come and talk, but we can probably weave that in somehow. So, so. For, all, for the new members since September, is that? You know, I way? honestly don't know if it's maybe since June, but yeah, it's a yeah. recent, recent new yeah. member event. Okay. And so yeah. we can definitely weave in something about leadership and that whatever's easy. I mean, I think it's going to be sort of a, you know, a social thing, but we could right. definitely have you guys talk or something like that. All right. We'll just keep it, keep it top of mind yeah. and let us know when it's coming up. And um, okay. yeah, it's not scheduled yet. So good. Good. All okay. right. All right. Thank you so much for all you sure. did to help. Enjoy us. your night. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.